Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Lately, I've been wondering what my life would be like if all the sins committed by my extended family never happened. Sometimes I wish I could switch lives with a family where no family members, extended or close, committed any sins whatsoever. Just to know what it's like. After 41 episodes of Season 1 and 39 episodes of Season 2, that can only mean one thing. You got Fall, the third season to have started after the turn of the new year. The Algae's Always Greener is the episode where Plankton uses an invention to switch his life with Mr. Krabs's because he wants to be successful for once. This episode aired on March 22, 2002 and is the first season premiere to not have Spongebob himself as the main focus character. This time, it's Plankton, the series' main antagonist. Spongebob still has quite a bit of screen time, but it's clear Plankton is the main character of this story, and strangely enough, something like this is actually more common than you may think when it comes to the season premieres. But of course, this isn't the first season 3 episode to air on TV. That is episode 85, Just One Bite, 4 episodes later. During production of Season 2, the positive reception of that and Season 1 resulted in a Season 3 being greenlit. Season 1 used traditional cell animation for the episodes, and starting with Season 2, the artists switched to digital ink and paint. This process was continued on for Season 3 as well. In 2002, a movie based on the Spongebob series was greenlit, and as a result, the show aired episodes more sporadically because the crew shifted focus to the movie and the season premiered on October 2001 with just one bite, as previously stated. Season 3 is considered the end of an era for many Spongebob fans, the end of the three golden or classic seasons of the show. Something else I've heard as of late is that this episode does not feature Spongebob at all. What? In actuality, this is referring to the quote-unquote main universe Spongebob, as this episode seems to take place in an alternate universe as Mr. Krabs and Plankton's lives are swapped throughout the majority of the episode. I personally don't agree, but we'll get to that later. Right now, let's watch this episode to finally kickstart Season 3. So the episode starts up, and at the Krusty Krab, Old Man Walker runs into a pole and grabs a ketchup bottle from the counter. That bottle had Plankton in it, ready to launch him into the patty at a moment's notice. But when Old Man Walker tried to get the ketchup out, he missed and Plankton was launched straight towards Mr. Krabs' office. He ricocheted around the office until he landed right in front of Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs laughed at him and flicked him away, offending a shrimp. Shrimp discrimination? Plankton hit the side of the chum bucket and went back inside, but the only food he had to eat was holographic meatloaf. Plankton was tired of not having food to eat like Mr. Krabs, and wonders what it would be like to have success like Mr. Krabs does. So Karen suggested Plankton to switch lives with him with a machine he built, which Plankton decided to do. Later, he set up his machine to switch lives with Mr. Krabs. After drinking during an acid trip, he woke up with a hangover and realized he was in Mr. Krabs' office in the Krusty Krab, with him in Mr. Krabs' place in all the images and his clothes, realizing that the life switcher actually worked. Then he heard Spongebob declaring that an order of two deluxe Krabby Patties was ready. It's about time Spongebob showed up. This is the latest he's appeared in a season premiere yet. Mr. Plankton wants one of the Krabby Patties for bun inspection. Spongebob says that patty was for the customer, but he does give Plankton two other patties for bun inspection. He only asked for one patty, not two. Mr. Plankton ran back into his office and was happy to finally be successful for once, but Spongebob came in asking for his weekly performance review. Mr. Plankton had no experience with reviews and said Spongebob was doing fine. Spongebob still wanted some constructive criticism so he could improve, so Mr. Plankton blurted out that he was using too much sauce, which resulted in Spongebob starting to choke up. Mr. Plankton ended up promoting Spongebob to cashier just to shut him up. Squidward saw Spongebob at the register, who declared he was now co-cashier. Squidward was upset with Mr. Plankton, and after complaining about what he did, Mr. Plankton put Squidward on the grill. 
If SpongeBob going from fry cook to cashier is considered a promotion, then is Squidward going from cashier to fry cook considered a downgrade? As Mr. Plankton went back to his office, Pearl came running in and jumping around, followed by her asking for an advance on her allowance. Mr. Plankton gave her a dollar, which upset Pearl, and she started to cry. Then Nat comes up and shows a disgusting Krabby Patty as a result of Squidward not being able to cook Krabby Patties well. SpongeBob came up saying he accidentally gave a customer a large soda when he asked for a medium. SpongeBob started yelling and Pearl complained to Mr. Plankton, and right after that, the warning siren went off. Mr. Plankton had no idea what was going on. It was soon explained that the most hated creature in Bikini Bottom was attacking the restaurant, which was no other than Eugene Krabs stealing a Krabby Patty, because it was his goal to steal a Krabby Patty and ruin the Krusty Krab. And according to SpongeBob, the worst part of the whole thing was public nudity. Krabs challenged them to make him put clothes on. SpongeBob fired a clothing cannon towards Krabs, missing him several times until he succeeded when he hit him with a bra. I prefer a pair of boots. So Krabs gave the patty back to Mr. Plankton, much to the latter's confusion. The other characters gave a victory screech, and Krabs said that one day he would get the Krabby Patty secret formula. Even if he came back day after day after day after day after day after day. day Those words drove Mr. Plankton crazy until he decided to switch back to how things were. He arrived back at the chum bucket, happy to eat the holographic meatloaf, and the episode ends. So that was the algae's always greener, and I'd say that's a fine episode. To start things off, let's discuss the bigger question I mentioned earlier. Does Spongebob himself actually appear in this episode? Yes. Okay, so the speculation I've heard is that people say this episode takes place in an alternate universe where Mr. Krabs and Plankton have their lives swapped. Obviously that's the point of this episode, but I never thought of this being an alternate universe in the show. And Spongebob doesn't appear for the first time until after Plankton switched his life with Mr. Krabs's. But one of the reasons why I thought this way is because Plankton still recalls everything else. He was able to tell that the whole thing was a result of the life switching machine, but he also retains his regular personality, so happy to finally experience the success he always dreamed of. He didn't know anything about, say, this clams magazine that he's on the cover of. He's just happy to have success for once in his life. He didn't know anything about the ways of the Krusty Krab, like Spongebob's performance review, or of Mr. Krabs' life outside of the restaurant, like Pearl's emotions. But what really keeps me from considering this to be an alternate universe is the fact that they still refer to the Krusty Krab and the Krabby Patty by their usual names, instead of them being changed to reference Plankton's name in some way. And there's no reason given as to why the names weren't changed to have Plankton's name in them. Not only that, but the characters are still referred to by their usual names, and not something different like Sponge Buck, SpongeBob's ancestor from episode 189, Pest of the West from season 5. So in my opinion, this is still the same universe, and SpongeBob is still in this episode. I do get why some people think otherwise, but I'm not in that camp. Next, here are a few fun facts about this episode. When SpongeBob was repeating, SOILED IT! over and over again, he repeats it 21 times, and when Krabs says, and the next day, near the end of the episode, he says it 17 times. Something that I didn't realize until recently is that this is the first episode where Karen's name is said on screen and it's revealed that she's Plankton's computer wife. Yeah, it wasn't said throughout seasons 1 and 2. That's the most mind-boggling fact about this episode to me. There's also a whopping seven memes that originated from this episode. Mr. Krabs yelling, So long, shrimp! And the shrimp looks offended. Plankton sipping a drink while going through the void. SpongeBob's too much sauce face. And the close-up of the bad Krabby Patty. SpongeBob yelling, Soiled in! Mr. Krabs' public nudity. And the victory screech. Aw, not SpongeBob's babbling! But now let's talk in detail about the episode itself. I think it's fine. There's a lot of good in this one. I really like how Plankton is characterized. It's understandable why he wants to be successful like Mr. Krabs. His own restaurant isn't popular and he can't accomplish what he wants to do. So he decides to switch lives just to see what it would be like to actually not be a failure. He finally has what he wants and is so happy. And side note, but this means that Plankton's plan was actually successful. 
That has never happened up to this point. But then he sees some stuff that also goes on with the Krusty Krab and with Mr. Krabs' personal life, and gets a taste of what his own invasions are like when Krabs comes in to steal the secret formula, and he decides none of that was worth it and was okay with what he has. While he's still struggling with everything else in his life and Plankton is insecure, the art that he goes through and the message he learns is still really good. That it's really easy to want something that looks good, but when you finally have it, it's not as glamorous as you thought. So be careful what you wish for. Something else that people don't really talk about is the fact that in this episode, Plankton actually listened to Karen's idea and didn't steal or take credit for it in any way. That's very significant for Plankton since he usually steals Karen's ideas. Out of the seven memes I mentioned earlier, I would probably say that my favorite is the one with the rotten Krabby Patty. That close up is so nasty that I love it. My second favorite is the one with the shrimp character. Why have we not seen this guy in the future? He's cool. I also like the silly action sequence with the warning siren and Spongebob trying to put clothes on Mr. Krabs. Squidward's also great too. I like how he stays calm with Spongebob before realizing he's co-cashier and then he goes to complain to Mr. Plankton and how he feels when he gets demoted to fry cook. The other characters are great too, but I don't have much to say about them. There's also a nice continuity example in this episode. Squidward makes a bad Krabby Patty here, showing that he doesn't know how to cook them well, which is consistent with season 1, where episodes 13, Pickles, and 40, Hookie, also show that he doesn't know how to cook them. I also like how the title of this episode is The Algae's Always Greener, it's a reference to the saying, the grass is always greener, altered a bit to reference the fact that the show is underwater, and it works with the moral this episode teaches. The Fairly Odd Parents also has an episode called The Grass is Greener, where Timmy thinks his parents don't want him around anymore, so he runs away, but soon learns that it was a misunderstanding and that they do love him. The overall moral here is different, but it's kind of the same idea. So overall, the reason I think this episode is decent is because there are less scenes than other episodes of season 3 that made me laugh. Obviously these memes weren't made with the intention of them being popular online, and I don't hate any of them, but there's not too much overall. This episode is not bad, far from it. It has a good moral and the characters are strong, especially Plankton. In the end, it's still a good start to season 3. But there are still some better episodes than this one in this season, but nevertheless, it's still worth a watch. The Allergy's Always Greener is a fine episode. I like the arc that Plankton goes through, and all the other characters are pretty good here as well. But I do wish people would talk about this episode for more than just the funny memes that originated from here. And that goes for other episodes of the series as well. But overall, this is still a good episode to kickstart season 3 with, even if it wasn't the first one to air. I also gotta say this, I've had holographic meatloaf before, and it is good, but I gotta go with my heart here and say that I prefer holographic flank steak. It is so much tastier. And now I'm kinda hungry, 